There's a happy puppy. There's a happy puppy. How are you, baby? You're a good girl. Hello. I just wanted to be up front and let you know that this really is a little house. There's a picture, it's a watercolour done in the 1950s when the house was painted yellow on the outside and had pink wallpaper and white carpets and white curtains on the inside. It is a little house. Let us go and see how we are getting on with the hidden door. I think I read far too many um, Enid Blyton books when I was a child because I like houses with hidden doors and uh, rather strange things going on. Hidden doors, secret passages, tunnels and turrets. Well, we do actually have a, um, a secret what do you call it, trap door down to the basement and we also have this what will be a secret door to the old garage. Now these books are real books. You can open them, you can read them. You can put them in the right way up. <laughs> That's Wuthering Heights by the way, quite a good read. Um, a lot of Charles Dickens. This is sort of the books that you get at the um, charity shop for a dollar or two and I do need some more to, to complete the bottom and it's a hidden doorway to, as you know, the Room of Requirement. The Room of Requirement is called the Room of Requirement because, let's get in focus, that's where Tools you usually store, the things I require to get on with working on the house. If they're not lying on the floor in the drawing room, they tend to live here along with all sorts of bits and pieces. These are well, the little corner um, vices. Uh, this piece of panelling matches that piece in the centre over there and will eventually end up on the other side. Um, this is the new panelling that's just arrived from overseas. It's been cut and started to be sanded and I need to remove some portions because I don't like the way it came um, and get on with it. You end up with a whole lot of little bits that have been cut away from other bits and pieces and they will all be made use of at different times. Like, uh, I think this is a copy the copy that I've made of the one that lives up above that pelmet, um, making copies of the ones on either side of there for different parts of the room. And something we didn't see the other day was above the um, doorways. I've completed about two weeks ago. That one and this one, they are carved wood and I've made the pillars and the floor. You probably didn't notice the floor last time. Maybe if I pull away the rug, you can have a little look. That was about two days worth of laying veneer onto board. And I actually did that to cover the hole that was in the wall. Floor, floor, I'm saying. Um, yeah, there you go. Just so that you know that um, this fireplace didn't used to be here either. This was just boulders, like Rocky Mountain boulders piled up from the 1950s. I changed it out for an old wooden one I'd bought at a charity shop, the Salvation Army actually. And then I removed the wood panelling in the fronts and installed a piece of granite that I got cut for it. Since then I've actually learned how to cut granite myself. So um, things change, I would cut it all myself the next time. Um, 
And this is the paneling I'm currently working on. I showed you the pieces that, that had arrived recently. These are a couple of my paintings. I did a lot of um, wildlife studies when I was young. I like them, but they're going to have to move over, maybe over there somewhere, um, because the paneling doesn't allow for paintings to be hung. I'll be doing that along there further. A further in depth look at the holes in the ceilings. Every time it rains, we get a drip. And that is because we have an old roof and it will need to be sorted. Hey puppy, we'd better put that carpet back. We pulled it away and just left it. What do you think of the floor anyway? Good girl. What we're looking at here is the palmet. This new one is not finished, not painted. And as you can see, the actual height of the windows stops short of the height of the palmet. And that is because once you put in some curtaining and cover the fact that the palmet's shorter, it actually enhances the room by making the whole room appear taller because of the height of the ceiling is normal, but the curtains draw your eye up further. Um, see that line underneath the painting I showed you earlier? That line was the old palmet that ran along above the windows and it foreshortened the look of the, the room, made it look low and long and sleek. There were no cornices in this house at all. It was just a plain ceiling with one piece of stick wood running along it and I installed all of these. They're remarkably cheap. Um, I thought the guy said they were $62 including uh, per meter. They weren't. They were $62 per length. And that basically there is a length. So you had 62, 62 and a half, 62, 62 and a half. And you would have a standard room. This is a very big room because of the walls we took out. And it encompasses a small alcove over there that we call the the music room only because it's got two pianos crammed in there one of them has to go but I can't decide which one plays beautifully and one looks beautiful um, yes the house is full of weird stuff but that's how we like it um, and there's the um, painting I did just to brighten it up it was very boring it was very ordinary but if you, you see the um, inlay work on the, on the wood of the harpsichord, um, a little unusual fact was that I bought it only maybe five years ago at a very cheap price, just $1,000 because it needs restringing. But when I was in my 20s, I made that as a miniature piece of panelling that I thought would go on the wall one day if I ever did have a chateau. Um, but what's actually happened is it actually matches almost perfectly the panelling on the harpsichord. And yes, it's a harpsichord. It does not sound the notes like a piano. If you play a piano, you get a dong. If you play a harpsichord, you get a plink. Much more pleasant. And compared to the other day, the sun has actually come out, so we might even go outside today. Um, I do apologize for the quality of my video. My hands do shake. And um, I haven't learned to edit yet, so there'll be some better videos showing me working on the pieces that I'm working on, finishing the paneling, finishing the outdoor garden, with this, which is something to behold. Um, we're putting in a big Victorian greenhouse, and you might be able to see it through there. I've already finished the, um, the garden room we have. We call that the, the summer 
pavilion and there'll be a winter pavilion that you can sit in in winter with a glass roof. The summer pavilion is a very pleasant place to be in summer because when it's hot the coolness of the um, granite walls and the um, inlaid marble floor is very cool. Just kick your shoes off and put your feet on there and you will cool down immediately. Plus the wind does blow through because the building has um, windows on only, on only one side. We have just had quite a winter storm, so you can see the debris, the lemons all came off the tree, um, was unable to move, uh, mow the lawns because of the rain. Um, you know, the whole world is having plenty of storms at the moment, but this is just a preview of the winter garden that's been constructed as we speak. And construction goes on, I mean, the house looks like a construction site most of the time but other times it looks rather beautiful we're very lucky to be able to grow um, oranges at our home masses of oranges more than we can ever eat so we give our neighbors permission to come and eat them um, there's not a lot going on in the garden at the moment other than um, the daffodils have just finished it's a very, very early spring. We've got some beautiful arum lilies and some little white bells, but there's not a lot happening in the garden as we speak. But um, even our garden shed has pretensions. Uh, I did this work about two months ago. Um, Carsten created that and um, I will probably use the same motive somewhere inside the house in the top of a panel perhaps and I've yet to finish the um, work on the ceiling which is a curved um, it needs all the other panels um, put in it's a curved um, Roman ceiling to go along with the um, beautiful alabaster um, light pendant that I got in a um, oh that one we'll call an antique shop it wasn't just a charity shop but being reused again like everything out the May tree is about to come out in August of course but there we go and here we have my daughter's sculpture her addition to the garden is, um, is the crying angel the weeping angel and she turned up at Halloween I will show you pictures of the Halloween party when we get there so it's a good sized yard on a rather ordinary house now the next job to be done is we are going to set work onto this these came from overseas I bought them online they're not expensive they're not quite what I want. So, what our intention is. Hey, puppy. Hey, say hello. Um, is to remove this part here. I, I don't like it. It doesn't look um, 18th century to me. It looks kind of a little modern. It's a little bit sharp. Uh, these are <laughs> vacuum packed. They come beautifully packed. Amazingly um, finished. They need some sanding and to remove that piece there and then a couple of paint, uh, loads of paint and eventually they will be the other side of the wall. So that's the project probably for tomorrow. I've got to go back to work today so um, we'll leave you with nice thoughts of a beautiful garden um, in which the birds are singing away merrily. Say goodbye to puppy. You happy there? You're a happy girl. Yeah.